The Faceless Lolly by Hillbilly Creeper. There is a curse that plagues this town, like an epidemic that holds no cure. This curse comes in the form of a little girl. No one knows where this little girl came from, and whoever sees her will either die or disappear without a trace. However, those who are lucky enough, those who have seen this curse have only seen the mask that it wears, but never its true face. That's probably why people either wind up dead or disappear off the face of the earth. They saw what she looks like. Some people have said that she wore a white dress stained with blood and had black dress shoes on. Others say her dress was pink and that she carried a stuffed toy which was covered in human flesh and marble painted with the blood of her victims. Me? Well, I have seen her up close and personal. Why I'm still alive is yet to be determined, but I know why people have never seen her face. It's because when confronted with this curse, it appears that she doesn't have a face, or so it seemed. Here's what happened a few years ago. I was babysitting for a friend, watching her children because she had a date and she couldn't find a babysitter at the last moment, and since I lived just next door, I was the closest thing she could find. While she was out, I fed her children and got them off to bed, when they were upstairs asleep calmly and safely. I figured I would sit down on the couch and watch a little television until my friend got back. When I was in the middle of watching my program, I nodded off to sleep until I was startled out of my sleep by a loud thumping sound coming from upstairs. Hearing this made me very alert and afraid. When I finally realized that it was coming from upstairs, I assumed that it must have been one of her children getting up to go to the bathroom. I thought nothing of it and went back to watching my program, until I heard the thump again. Concerned and curious, I went upstairs to check on the children, but I made my way up the stairs. I saw a shadow as I headed up the stairs. At first, I thought it was one of the little children, but the shadow appeared to be too small to be one of my friend's children. I called out to the little shadow and asked, Hello, is anyone there? All I received in return was a girlish giggling. It was eerie and sounded like it came from a very young child. It was playful and mysterious, but also seemed somewhat forced. It's hard to explain, but if I were to use one way to describe the giggles, it was as if it held no emotion. It was cold. Have you ever heard a child laugh so mechanically? I hadn't until that moment. As I continued cautiously up the stairs, the shadow was gone and all that remained was pitch black darkness. I reached for the light in the hall and headed towards the children's bedroom. I went to the oldest child to check on him and see if everything was alright, and as I walked into the room where he was sound asleep in his bed, I was concerned because I didn't hear any breathing or snoring or any sort of sleeping noises at all for that matter. I found this kind of odd. Even the quietest of sleepers at least made some type of sound. Thinking this, I went closer to the bed and began to lightly shake him while I asked if he was okay. Still no movement. I pulled back the covers and to my horror, I discovered that the poor child was brutally gutted like a pig with his intestines and organs strewn out of him. 
The only thing that was apparent to me at the time was the look of sheer terror on his face before he died. The expression he took to his death. It was such a mangled, deformed look which was staring back at me, cold and agonizing. At this point, I didn't know whether to scream or puke. I tried desperately to choke back a scream. That's when I realized that I needed to check on the youngest brother, so without a second's thought, I ran to the young boy's room to check on him. I silently prayed that he was still alive, but to my surprise, he was gone. I called out his name, but there was no response. As I ran downstairs and continued to yell for him, I heard his voice laughing along with that little girl giggle behind it, and I heard him talking to someone. He said, Are you sure this will be a fun game to play? I don't know. My mommy told me to never go off with strange people. That's when I heard the giggle again followed by a little girl's voice that was so soft, it was almost a whisper. She responded, It's okay. It will be a fun game. I promise we will have lots of fun together. Just like I had fun playing with your older brother. But he didn't want to play as much. But that's alright. I took care of him. And as long as you play with me, I won't have to do away with you like I did your brother. I ran to where the voices were coming from, and that's when I saw her. She was wearing a white dress covered in blood and holding a stuffed animal that looked oddly like a giraffe which was covered in blood. I yelled out to them to stop where they were, and the little girl turned around to face me. I was shocked to realize that she didn't have a face. She had all the features of a little girl, but no fucking face. I began to charge towards her, trying to grab my friend's son, but with no prevail, the little girl stopped me. I don't know how she did it, but once I got close to her, it felt like I hit an invisible wall. On impact, I was launched backward thrown against a wall, and as I laid there, it seemed as if minutes had passed before I began to gain consciousness. Defeated, I watched on as they headed out the door, holding hands together. They were laughing and giggling. I tried to stop them again, but she was just too strong for me to handle. How could a little girl be this damned strong? each and every time I tried to pull him away from her. Even though she had managed to stop me each and every time, I still tried one last time. This was when she turned around again and started to giggle once more. To my annoyance, she said, Don't try to stop me, or you will wind up like everyone else that I played with. Just another body in the morgue. So if you know what's good for you, you leave me alone and let me have my fun. I yelled out, why the fuck are you doing this? Why? She replied to my question. Because it's fun, silly. Killing people is so fun. It gives me pleasure and nothing can compare to it. Just the feeling of blood splash all over my face and the warm, slimy feel of intestines and organs jiggling in my hands. Just like how I imagine Christmas is. So back off. The only reason I'm sparing you is that my new friend asked me to. So if you know what's good for you, you don't stop me. Ever. She then released a giggle. Like... A laugh, then turned around, grabbed a hold of my friend's son by his hand, and began walking away into the darkness. I watched helpless, and an overwhelming feeling of dread and worry flooded me, but more so, 
fear. My gut turned as their silhouettes became one with the darkness of the chill evening night. Not knowing what else to do, I ran back into the house and immediately called the police. Then I called my friend and told her the whole story of what had happened. The police came, they questioned me, and though I pleaded and begged them to look for this little girl, I became a suspect for a while as I continued to tell them all that I knew and I tried to tell them everything that had happened, but they didn't believe me. They just chopped it off as a robbery gone wrong and a kidnapping. When my friend got back home, she blamed me for this as she cried. She watched her oldest son be carried off in a body bag. I can only imagine what she's going through right now, especially if I had children and that had happened to me. I would be completely upset and pissed off beyond belief, but her sadness didn't last long. I'm afraid a month or two after her son's funeral, and after she stopped looking for her youngest, she went into a deep depression. A depression. It was so deep, there was no return. She even stopped talking to me until one day, a delivery man started to smell something coming from her house. He explained it as the smell of death. When the cops came to bust down her door, they found her laying there in the living room with her wrists sliced open and pills scattered all over the floor. She had committed suicide. I guess the thought of losing her children was too much for her and she couldn't take it anymore. As for me, I dedicated my life to hunting down this demon-like child, and I travel to town after town for each clue that is left, especially when a child goes missing, is found dead, or someone else like a parent is dead. I just know that it's her claiming another victim. Every once in a while, I'll get closer to finding her. How's that, you may ask me? Well, it's simple. I always follow the giggling, and that always gets me closer to finding the creature I have now called the Faceless Lolly.